Guys, what's up? My name's Swords, and today I'm gonna teach you how to grind through diamond all the way to masters by yourself. Grinding through diamond can be quite a struggle. Most of the time you're gonna have bad teammates. Sometimes you're just gonna go negative RP. Maybe you got the rough mindset and you're definitely gonna come across toxic players. So this guide is pretty much gonna sum up all of the things that you should be doing in order to ensure that you get positive RP and that you can reach masters by yourself without needing anyone else on your team. So watch this video all the way to the end so that you can do your best in your diamond matches. And before I forget, please like and subscribe if you want to bring your gameplay to the next level for Apex Legends. These next few months, we're going to be putting out plenty of content to help the community improve. The first thing we're going to want to talk about is your overall play style and mindset. You're going to typically want to have this passive aggressive type of play style. When you're going from plat into diamond, the gap between plat and diamond is huge. It's actually pretty huge. So you're gonna have to play very different. At this tier, people know how to play the game. They know how to use their abilities and they know how to rush you. You don't wanna think that you're gonna win every single fight. This is the time you really need to start playing out your fight strategically. Play pretty cautious, but don't camp if you don't have to. The only time you should be bunkering down is in a building toward the later zones. Early game, you're gonna wanna get kills if you can only take the fights that you're more likely to win you don't want to take too risky of a fight that you and your team are going to go down because ultimately that's going to result in you getting negative rp if two teams have been fighting for a while it may be a good idea to third party them but you're going to want to pay attention to the kill feed and the sounds of the weapons being used from that fight because if you look at the kill feed and you know like maybe you hear r301 being fired a certain distance away and then you see like two people go down from r301 that's probably that fight you will know that two people are down from that fight and maybe that is a fight that you're going to want to rush because that team that wins is going to be low and that's pretty much easy rp think about the best ways to engage and again don't put yourself in a disadvantageous position take the high ground if you can play cautious and play passive aggressive keep in mind that it's not always a good idea to third party sometimes you want to avoid fights you know if there's like three or more teams fighting, yeah, you know, you don't want to risk your RP. Seriously, stay clear of those type of fights. If you're fighting in a really open area, you also may not want to third party that fight because open areas usually result in choke points. Just don't do it. All right. Just don't do it. Fighting in open areas isn't always the best thing to do. Just be careful. Just be careful. There's a lot of ways into an open area and you don't want to be that squad being shot at by two different teams from all over the map. You're going to want to drop smart. Don't drop hot. Don't be that player who drops straight down in a diamond rank game just to get squad wiped in 2.5 seconds. Don't be that player. Think about where you and your team are going to be much more likely to be successful late game and safe early game. Most of the time, you want to drop at the ends of the map, you know, places where nobody's going. This way, you can loot up and not worry about getting wrecked by a death squad and losing that minus 48. Seriously, death squads to me, are full squads with full predator trails. Those are squads you typically don't want to land with. Why take the risk? Why take that risk? There's no need to. Land somewhere where nobody is and you will be good. As a solo player, you don't know the skill level of your teammates just yet. Play it out smooth, play it out cautious, play it out smart. Sometimes when you're dropping, people come out of nowhere. And that happens sometimes. You may think you're landing without anybody, but really you're landing with the team. And in the event of that situation, what I, at least what I do, when I realize that a team is landing with me, I land away from them as much as I can and I loot up somewhere else. I ping, I ping the loot that I can for my teammates. I direct my, my teammates with pings to come to me so that we can loot together and avoid that fight. The only time you take early fights is if a teammate gets a down or your team is decked out in blues and purples. And of course you got good guns. As a solo player, things are super random in the beginning, so anything can happen. The type of loadout you guys are gonna wanna run is the R301 and Mastiff, or an assault rifle and shotgun. Right now, in this meta for season eight, assault rifles and shotguns is basically gonna equal better fights, simply. I recommend the R301 because you can fight typically at any range with it. You can combat snipers with this. You can suppress teams mid range with this. This gun is going to get you RP. Seriously, swap it out. Swap that Volt out, swap the R99 out, pick up the R301, put that Android receiver on it, mod this gun first. Throughout my journey through Diamond to Masters, I realized the key to me getting RP was to modding this gun first. I, I can't stress how important it is 
to mod this gun first. All right, I just want you guys to do it. The Mastiff, use the Mastiff for follow-up damage in those close range fights. Seriously, it's gonna help you a lot. This gun is gonna be killer close range. It's gonna make you deadly. It's gonna make you prepared for every single engagement. You can swap the Mastiff out for a Peacekeeper, or if you find a Prowler, always, always swap your shotgun out for the Prowler. The Prowler is one of the strongest guns in the game right now. Put it to auto, automatic fire. You're rarely gonna lose fights with that gun. Seriously. This loadout is goaded. I'm probably gonna make a whole video on this loadout. The next thing you don't wanna do is don't be the hero. Seriously. And if you don't know what I mean by this, I mean put yourself first, then help your team. If you can. You're gonna be in a bunch of situations as a solo player where your random teammates make silly choices and end up dying. You don't wanna be that guy running in, trying to get their banners just to die and lose everyone's points. Seriously. Your teammates don't want you to die. Your teammates don't want to lose points. They want you to run away and do what you got to do to survive. So yeah, sometimes if your teammates are getting chased down by a full squad, it may not be worth your time to help them, to try to help them. They just might be dead. You straight up just might have to run away and leave behind your teammates in order to ensure that all of you can at least not lose as much RP, but potentially gain RP. Which leads us into our next tip, becoming a ninja. Hiding and ratting away is all the solo game sometimes, and there ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with nothing that. Nothing wrong with nothing that. Nothing wrong with there that. Ain't nothing you can wrong hide with in that. trees. You can crouch walk so people can't hear your footsteps. You, you know, be silent like a ninja. You don't want to be heard. Don't peek. Don't shoot at people if you are having to rat away. Sometimes it is just necessary. Even pros do it. Seriously, there ain't nothing wrong about it. Sometimes you just straight up gotta hide because at this level, you're just not gonna 1v3 people most of the time. You're just not. If you really wanna hit masters, whenever you see that minus 48, that minus 43, you need to have the mindset that that is unacceptable. You know, if you lose like minus 20 or something, okay, fine. At least you lost minus 20, but not like minus 48. We need to avoid that. If you keep losing minus 48, it's gonna be hard to get to masters. You need to get good at surviving. Seriously, just survive. All right, wait as long as you can before you need to move position into the next ring. If you wanna get through diamond, your goal is just to make it to the final zone each game. That should be your goal. Not taking every fight you can, you know, it's all about reaching that final zone. There's a trick to getting out of every single tier, every single ranked tier. There is a, a, a way to get out a certain type of play style if you want to get to the next level. In diamond, that level is simply making it to the final zone. Know your weaknesses, hold up in a building if you must, and trust your randoms if they're good players. Now, the way I see it, I've been telling a lot of my friends this, and I'm gonna share with you guys too. When solo queuing through Diamond, you're gonna have two types of games, actual ranked games, and games where you have to survive your teammates. <laughs> Seriously. The type of ranked games where you have decent teammates, you know, that's true ranked to me. When you have a, a good squad, you're gonna know it. And when you know it, your goal is to play smart with those teammates to get some kill points. Seriously, that way you can get a bunch. That team, those type of games are going to be the games that are going to help you climb because you're going to get a good amount of points when you have those good games. And then those games where you have silly teammates, teammates that are just making bad decisions, decisions that are costing you and your team the game, you are going to have those games. And when you do, I need you to realize that this is one of those games where you just need to survive, all right? Your goal may not be to gain RP, it just may be to reduce as much RP loss as you can. And if you could get away with kills, go for it. If you see that rat, go for it. Seriously, if you have a teammate that's dropping you on top of two other squads on drop, split away from that player and do you, man. Split away from that player and land solo if you have to. You need to prioritize your points. Teammates that are running into silly fights or just playing odd, you're going to want to play cautiously around. Don't feel bad if you're in a situation where you're straight up better off just leaving them behind to go rat and play solo. Seriously, I know that might sound bad, but honestly, it's, that's what you got to do if you want to get out of Diamond, and it is worth it when you hit Masters. It is worth it. I'll get to that at the end. I played Loba. I actually played Loba in my grind to getting to Masters. I picked Loba because her tactical allows her to get in and out of situations pretty easily when it works. I mean... We know the bracelet's broken sometimes, but to be honest, most of the time it works in most situations. Being able to choose your loadout early game and get your team looted up early game was able to help my was able to help my games a lot. When I couldn't play Loba, I played Bloodhound. 
Being able to play Bloodhound and scan people really helps you get assists and helps your team see people through walls. Bloodhound's overall just a really good character this season, so Bloodhound's also really good for solo queuing. Gibraltar is also a really good legend for solo queuing. The bubble, the arm shield, the ultimate, all that is good for endgame and at all points during a match. Gibraltar is just an all-around good character, especially with Gibraltar's passive, being able to take reduced damage. That character is going to get you far. Caustic is another one of those characters. Caustic has seen so many buffs the last couple seasons that he's in a really good state right now. And you can really hold your own and bunker down in a building if you must as a Caustic. So I'd recommend him. For that solo slot another character is octane octane's jump pad is actually pretty good nowadays if you can combine octane with a revenant then i think you're looking really good the jump pad allows you to get in and out of situations quite easily so yeah, you may want to look at octane horizon is also a really good character horizon is just all around good being able to go to the high ground quite easily throwing her ultimate to wobble combo is going to help is going to help you in a lot of situations so those legends are pretty good legends for solo queue Next thing, let's talk about toxicity. How to deal with toxicity. Typically, my method to toxicity is don't deal with it. I don't deal with it. I don't know about you guys, but personally, I have voice I have voice chat permanently turned off. Teammates with and without mics tend to be toxic when they die or things don't go their way or maybe they're using the text-to-speech. I don't know about you guys, but I get anxiety from toxic teammates and that screws up my decision-making and team play. So I have it permanently turned off. And you know what? That's helped me so much and has made ranked so much more enjoyable. So for those of you in my situation, I would encourage the same. I typically just use the ping system to understand what my team is trying to do. And that works for me. And, and, and it did work for me on my grind to masters. However, if you're a teammate or if you're a type of player that likes to communicate, you know, using comms and, uh, you know, go for it. Seriously, you go for it. If that helps you, by all means, I encourage you to do it. You need to do what you got to do. What works best for you, because what, what may work best for me may not yeah, it work best for you. So for this specific tip, I would just say, if you have a toxic teammate and you do like to use comms, then just mute that player. The moment they begin to show toxicity to you, just, just mute them. So be it, they made their choice and it's time for you to play the game. So that's what I would say. Otherwise, break a leg on the comms. <laughs> the last tip is commitment. I need to remind you guys that this is not easy. It took me one week to solo my way through Diamond to Masters. It was not easy and it was long hours sometimes whenever you start to get a little frustrated from a few games you know maybe you're getting you know a lot of negative rp loss and maybe you're just getting frustrated take a break trust me take a break take a break come back later it's all good you know we lose sometimes it happens come back later and i trust me you are gonna come back with a much better mindset you're gonna be getting them points you're gonna be climbing dude you're seriously gonna be climbing prioritize your points and avoid that minus 40 as best as you can if you want to reach masters let me know if you guys want more tips on how to reach masters it is worth it when you make it let me tell you the reward the hitting masters is more than just getting that seasonal dive trail more than just getting that badge the games are so good it's not always like camping until the end no no if anything i think i think the camping meta is like in diamond i think that is the way to climb through diamond is camping but my masters games have been so fun fun it's like it's like a much more high skilled game of pubs, in my opinion. Once you reach master size, apex spreads. So everyone is pushing. Everyone is trying to get kills because uh, when you reach masters, you get minus 60. So it doesn't matter if you rat to the end, you're still gonna lose points if you don't have kills. So typically when you reach this level, it's a whole level of the game where you can seriously improve as a player. So it's worth it. It's worth it. Stay committed. Y'all can get through diamond. Trust me, if I did it, y'all can do it. And if you need any tips or any more feedback, join my Discord. Hit me up. I actually talk to y'all. I care about y'all. I want y'all to do your best. By the way, I stream on Twitch. I actually stream on Twitch all the time. If you're not following me already, you should totally follow me on Twitch. Seriously, I love talking to you guys. I love getting to know y'all. You know, we chill out here. All right. So until then, take it easy, guys. And peace out.